after a month of waiting, uh, a package has been delivered to me here. It's a, an FM kit, uh, FM radio kit that I bought off of uh, Banggoods. And I've cut the top off the thing. It took, a, as I say, a month to get it here. It got delayed in Quito, Ecuador, for about a, um, about a week or so, 10 days, uh, because it, was, uh, it arrived during the uh, Carnival holiday or uh, Mardi Gras. So anyway, this is what's inside, and let's see what we got here. Then I cut it open. And, oh good, there's some sort of printed instructions in here. And, we just put this aside. Okay. Well, let's see, we got the basic unit here. It's been taped shut. And uh, it's, I don't know, it's like maybe the opener. I don't think it was opened by customs because the uh, bag hadn't been opened. And oh yeah, I'm going to read this real well here. It's all Chinese. So let's see here. I'll tell you what, let me pop open the case here. Okay, and they got. Ugh. Okay, we've got a loose display here. That'll be fun to put in. Uh, the circuit board, speaker, the whip antenna here. Well, it's probably the tuning wheel. Not sure what this is, but I saw some guy on a, a video who was speaking Russian, or I think it was Russian, and he showed it, you put this together like this, but how I would use it after that, he didn't show the details. So uh, let's see what we got there. And yeah, there's some of these little strips, which are, they look like those zebra strips that are used with LCDs, but. I'll be quite honest with you, I'm not sure what has to be done here, so uh, I may have gotten myself into more trouble than I know what to do with, or just maybe we'll be able to complete this. Well, let's see, here we got another little, oh, oh. Uh, we got a little piece of rubber here that looks like it fits down in here, oh, whatever this is, so anyway. Let me um, stop the filming here. I'm going to sort out my components because I got plenty of those and uh, kind of check them off against the checklist of parts and we'll see what happens. Well, I've got the parts all separated, at least the uh, individual components. And um, uh, the instructions, while they're, uh, they are pretty bad here. I've kind of gone through the parts list and I've got all the capacitors and the uh, resistors and other stuff here and uh, some of these things I'm just going to assume they're probably the descriptions of screws and stuff and or, or the length of wire that there is here so I'm going to just kind of go with it. It looks like I've got at least uh, one spare on all the cheap uh, parts like the uh, resistors and the uh, capacitors, so I, uh, I'll be in good shape there. And I, here's the uh, listing for the item on Banggoods. And I got the thing, well, depending on whether you want the white one or the improved or the uh, version one or version two kit, that ran anywhere from $8.09 to $8.59. I think mine was uh, $8.42 when I bought it. It's got the white case and it has the display on here that you have to uh, mount this little um, COB or uh, chip on board module. Uh, on the oh, on the thing yourself. So uh, instructions that come with this are sketchy at best. Uh, basically, they're basically saying put on your capacitors, your wire wound inductors, the uh, ceramic filters, 
uh, frequency discriminators, resistors, etc. In other words, basically, I think work your way up on the board as far as the height of the components. Uh, so that's just standard construction technique. Uh, let me see now. It's about time to start uh, doing some soldering. Looks like I've uh, finished putting in the resistors on the main circuit board. That was pretty easy. Um, so, and I've got one of each of the resistors left over. And since there were, well, one extra for each one, I think I'm okay. So now it's on to the capacitors, I think. I've um, finished soldering in the uh, capacitors. And um, I've also put in the ICs here. Uh, the only thing I have left to go are the, uh, on this board now are, are a few components that fit, fit uh, directly on the, uh, the circuit board, uh, like this volume control and the headphone jack, and some, some ceramic discriminators here, and a couple of ice, uh, a couple of transistors, and some oh, uh, some coils. So I'm going to put those on there and see how things go. These little ceramic discriminators that go, well, here's one of them that goes in here. It looks like, look carefully here, uh, the, there's a red dot on the thing, and I'm assuming that that's the, uh, to allow it to line with a little square right here. Oops, let me out the pencil. And so that it'll line up with the little uh, uh, square here, and there's another one right over here. It only has two pins, but it also has a red dot on it. So I'm going to put them together. There weren't any instructions in the uh, uh, any instructions in the uh, little uh, pamphlet or whatever the, that was online explaining what to do. But I, this is my best guess. Just about finished up adding all the components on here. I've got the uh, Headphone jack, the volume control, the um, a switch there. I've got these little uh, chokes or coils installed. Uh, those were done by count, and they're oh, uh, the, the number of turns on the thing. It wasn't difficult. Uh, this is the only one that has uh, five and a half uh, turns on it. These other two have six and a half turns. The only problem is they don't. Uh, Oh, they, some of the coils are perpendicular to what they are displayed on the, um, on the circuit board. I don't think it makes a bit of difference. I haven't soldered in the uh, tuning capacitor here yet because the, um, if you look here uh, on the back, some of these, um, the tabs are a little crusty. So I'm going to put a little bit of flex on them before I uh, solder them. Uh, really uh, hit them pretty hard with some flux. And uh, other than that, I think this part of the board is almost done. Here's the secondary uh, circuit board that has to be soldered together. And the LED, or LCD rather, fits on top of this thing. And uh, it uses little ribbon cables to attach the display to the circuit board. So uh, I'm going to be kind of careful. And fortunately, they gave me a bot dough. There must be eight of them here, so I guess they figure that, that you're entitled to make some mistakes. Then there's a small uh, chip on board that has to be uh, dr the driver for the uh, LCD display that has to be uh, soldered on here. Uh, there are also some uh, little, oh, these little uh, button switches that have to be taped on top of here, or at least that's what the instructions say. You uh, tape the, the little uh, gizmos on there. And then finally, if I go to the other side of the board, there are a number of components to stick on here. There's a, uh, oh, there's a uh, crystal that needs to be installed, a, uh, oh, um, a couple of capacitors, and a diode, and there's one more capacitor, and then there's a, uh, a cable that will connect the, uh, uh, the display and the clock and time functions on here. It'll collect, uh, connect it to the, um, um, or to the main circuit board. So I think I've got all my connections there without 
bridges and I think even though they aren't great looking I think they're okay I think they're connected I'm going to try working on the other side the other side of this board now I'm putting on the few circuit elements that are there well I have attached the LCD to the board I'm hoping it'll all work out correctly there were these little strips of uh, tape, which I assume are, uh, here we go, conductive uh, strips of tape, and I got them lined up, attached them, uh, half of it to the uh, glass itself, which if you looked at it very carefully under a kind of weird light, you could see um, oh, like a little uh, conductive edge there to them. And then uh, I connected it to the, pushed it down onto the, uh, the the edge board connectors that were on the back. You know, let's see if you can see it here. Yeah, on the back of the um, uh, display circuit board. I think I've got it put together correctly. I guess I'll only know once I uh, apply some power to the thing. Now I've got to install these little buttons. Um, there's little caps that fit on these buttons little tiny things like so and they need to be taped on there now I picked up some uh, cellophane tape and I think it may work here so I'm going to try that one first if it doesn't uh, work I can remove the uh, cellophane tape easy enough and try soldering them well I've got the first of the uh, little buttons taped on there and it wasn't nearly as bad as I feared it might be and it's got a nice clicky quality to it. Well I got those little buttons cellophane taped on there and it actually went a lot easier and faster than I thought it might. I thought it was going to be terrible and really they weren't bad at all so uh, well, let's continue on the next stage of the construction. I think I'm to the point where now it's pretty much connect, just adding all the connecting wires, the antenna, and uh, doing some soldering on the, uh, oh, on the power, and then sorting out my screws to put all the, um, uh, you know, the case and the uh, boards into the case. And I'm trying to put the case and everything here together. And there are little buttons here. These are on the front of the case. Uh, they're just loosely stuck in here, but they're going to be uh, pressing up against the buttons on the LCD display. So I can put that in. That appears to be lined up reasonably well. And if I press the button, oops, if I press the button here, I feel a click. And so that's a good sign. Uh, speakers in here but it's very loose I don't see any provision for attaching it I suspect that what they want you to do is just uh, either bend or melt some plastic or perhaps put a little do dollop of glue on here that's what I probably think I'll try doing uh, so that's yeah, one of the problems I've got to come fix up here another one here is um, the uh, back of the case, this is where the um, the batteries will fit in, and um, they have you put in the contacts. This thing has to be uh, pushed in pretty hard, the uh, positive battery contact, and the negative battery contact was quite hard. I bent it a little bit, but I think I've got it uh, in there securely now, um, Yeah, but it's a little worse for wear. Trying to sort out where the various wires go, uh, there are... Well, one of them is very obvious. It's a little five uh, conductor rainbow cable. But then there are some others here that the uh, use for which is a little less than obvious. I'm going to uh, just try to follow the color code. The black wires is a little longer than the other black wire. Um, so I'm going to guess that the black and white wire, which are shown for being used by the... Uh, uh, speakers, uh, those are probably going to be the ones that go to the speakers since they're the same length. Uh, then there's a red and a black wire that are the same length here for the, um, uh, that I'm assuming are for the power. 
the gray wire must be the antenna wire. Hey, so I think everything's just about taken care of, and then the uh, little five conductor wire here, that's obviously used to connect the uh, display and the uh, main circuit board. Here's what I've got hooked up so far. Um, I've got the speaker cables hooked up to the uh, proper points on the uh, on the uh, board. I've got the power cable. There's the well, actually that's the ground, and I've got the, um, the positive hooked up. I've got the display cable hooked up. I've got the um, antenna uh, wire. It's ready to go, but I want to um, glue in the speaker here. Uh, there, as I say, there's no provision uh, that I can see for attaching the speaker. So what I'm going to end up doing here is use a little bit of hot melt. Well, now I've got my speaker uh, glued in there with hot melt, and it seems reasonably secure. I don't know if it'll, don't think it'll vibrate. And now the next step, I think, is to put this circuit board on top. Now it's going to close up. Okay, let me go get a uh, set of batteries here. One moment. I'll leave the thing running. This may be kind of the, the high moment of uh, excitement. Uh, anticipation. Let's see here. I'm going to put the batteries down in here and... We got power, and we're getting. Some... Ah. Okay, let's try this. Okay, well, I think it's going to do a neat little troubleshooting here. So, on to the troubleshooting, see what's wrong with the display. After goofing around with this thing yesterday and having problems with the display, I stopped goofing around with it, watched a movie, and re uh, kind of came at back at it this morning. Uh, yesterday I was having problems. The the um, the radio section was working, but the display wasn't. Now I've got it so the display is working, and it required well uh, this little surface mount um, component here. This little chip on board or glob here. Uh, it comes on a module that has to be uh, soldered. Um, to the to the main board and it's about I don't know it must be well it's really small pitch and it's hard to uh, solder uh, I had done a reasonably good job of soldering it but it wasn't completely done and I found by using a little flat tipped um, a, a soldering iron um, blade I was able to fill in the little holes on the uh, the chip here uh, that seem to, well, need to be filled in for better conductance. And once I got that, I had a solid display. Then uh, I started goofing around with trying to tune the thing up to the, the little capacitor here, the variable capacitor. There is a procedure written up uh, on the uh, Banggood website on how to... Um, change the oh the some settings on a screw here there's a, this this screw right here uh, on the back of this capacitor by changing it you can make a dramatic difference in the uh, number that's being displayed on the uh, or the frequency that's being tuned to and the the uh, um, the number that's being displayed previously uh, I was only able to get approximately 
uh, 96, 98 uh, megahertz uh, as the thing came out of the box with unadjusted. By goofing around with that little knob, I was get, able to get it up to, well, they suggest 108.6 megahertz. But uh, here in Ecuador and in most of North America, I think you only go up to eight, uh, 108, uh, 108 megahertz. So I've set, settled on, it's now I think about 108.2 uh, is the top um, uh, frequency. Then it says to adjust this little coil right here. And all you do is just fiddle around with the spacing on it and uh, tune the, uh, the, the um, uh, variable capacitor down to its lowest level. And it's very sensitive to changes in the uh, amount of spacing between the coils here. And there they suggested setting it up for 700 or 72 megahertz. Now, this is a Chinese radio, so apparently in uh, China they use 72 megahertz or 76 megahertz actually as the low end of the frequency range. So anyway, I set the thing to the 72 megahertz that they uh, suggested, and by going back and forth, you can eventually uh, get, get the settings uh, done correctly here. So it now works in a reasonably wide range. In my case, about 72 uh, megahertz to 108.2 megahertz, which is just fine. Anyway, now I'm gonna put this thing together and see what happens. I think I've got a uh, working radio. The, 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 the uh, time displays on here. If I click the little alarm button, there's a little alarm indicator up there that comes on. Uh, if I click the alarm display, uh, 7 o'clock a.m. shows up as my alarm or alarm time. Uh, by hitting the uh, time set button here, I can, oops, let's try this. Um, I can change the minute, for instance, the so it's go, uh, jump from a, a 3.09 in the afternoon to 3.10. And I can do the same thing with the hour. So it looks like it's working. Oh, and let's go back here. I'm going to install that little knob again, the, um, the one that is used for the tuner. Oh, hey, good. It lined up right, on me, right away. I'll stick this on here. Okay, I'm going to turn it on. Right now we're, okay, at the top of the range it's 108 now, uh, megahertz. But as I tune it down, one of the major stations here in Cuenca is uh, 107.3. It's uh, Radio Canela. I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. And I can tune it right on down to... Seventy one point seven, which is pretty close to seventy two megahertz. And as you can see, I'm picking up some harmonics, I guess. Down in this lower end of the range, because there's nothing that's being uh, broadcast here, but it's it's working. So let's go up to eighty eight point How about that? It works. So now let's put it all together here and see what happens. Okay, well I've got the main board here installed and it's just held in by five screws and it looks like, ooh, wait a second here. Aha! Uh -huh. I just uh, see, I've, I've got one, two, three, four, and then there's a fifth screw here that I've got to match up. I'll bet you this one right here doesn't, it's not needed. So I'm going to take that guy out right now. And I'll bet you that's where the one really long screw is going to go. Well, here it is. The radio is all put together. All the um, screws fit in properly. I've got a little battery uh, cover here. 
it fits on there nicely. Uh, I've found out that, um, well, let's see here. It says radio receiver with alarm clock, which that's true. It also shows the time. It's now wrong because uh, uh, after taking out the battery, it, it's gone to another time. Um, it's FM band, 74 to 108 megahertz. It's got the minute set, the hour set, the time set, and alarm display. Uh, it's pretty simple to use. Uh, now, I've discovered one thing here, and that is that the power the power button is a little hard to use because uh, it doesn't latch very well. Oops, let's go back here. And it doesn't latch very well. I think we have to come up with a little, you really have to push down on it pretty hard. Oops. Or uh, maybe if I would uh, put a little uh, bead of sugru or something on top of it just to build out that button just a little bit longer. The other buttons seem to work just fine. So if I hold down the minute set and I can change the time. Let's go here to, I'm going to set it to, right now it's 3.30, here in Cuenca. Okay, if I hold down on the button, it goes at, no, I don't know, once, one minute per second or so. Okay, so we've got that set. Let's take a look at the alarm time. And right now it's set for 7 a.m. I'm going to set it for 7.30. I'm not an early bird. Okay. And if I choose to, so I could turn the alarm on. Ooh, hey, let's see what happens here. I haven't tried that. Okay, it's uh, 3, 3.34 p.m. Let's try setting the alarm for um, uh, 3.36 here. One moment. Three. Okay. I guess I could have probably got by with 335, but I'll let you uh, share the anticipation with me and make sure the alarm's turned on here. Just final comments on this. Uh, so far, well, what did I expect from an $8 radio, from a radio kit from China? Well, I got just about what I expected. It was fun to put together. It works. Uh, the, uh, the, the main board was easy to assemble. That um, I bought the so-called improved version of the um, of the radio, uh, which I don't think had any improvements, but it allowed you to uh, attach the uh, LCD and the um, little um, small surface mount board on the uh, um, on this display board yourself, and so that was kind of fun, and uh, well, also it was kind of difficult. Uh, almost all my problems came from that particular uh, component. But uh, now that I've overcome that problem, I think, well, I think it's going to work pretty well. Hey, and it came on. So how about that? The arm works. Oh, and I don't know how long it'll stay on for. Uh, I'll just let it continue running here and see, uh, see if it eventually shuts off. Well, I put everything away. Uh, I put away my tripod and all that, and I noticed after um, um, uh, the, the this button here was very deeply recessed, but then I also remembered there was this tiny little piece of plastic that was in the um, the kit, and it has a little button, a little hole, a square hole here. And I'm wondering, could that possibly be uh, replacement for this button here. So I'm going to take the uh, radio apart and uh, see what happens. Well, look at this. I found that uh, little um, that little piece of plastic there is probably intended to be the uh, an extension for the for that switch. Now I just have to go in here and remove the uh, other uh, switch cap that's in there, and I think I'm going to have a, a better functioning radio. I've opened up the, uh, uh, well, removed the LCD display, 
and I've gotten down to these little buttons. They pop right off. They, you know, they come right out of here. But what I'm going to do, and I, I tried out um, just putting that uh, board in place uh, to see if the button fits through there. And sure enough, the button does fit through. So what I'm going to do is uh, just with a, uh, oh, a pair of scissors or a knife, I'm going to... Uh, cut off that excess button, I think I've found a solution. Okay, that uh, button is gone. I, uh, I just used a pair of wire cutters and trimmed it back. I left, uh, well, there's a little pin that uh, all the other buttons are, are used use here to align the buttons. So I left that in place, but uh, I'm now going to put it all back together and I'll, I'm going to see what happens. Well, check it out. I think I've finally unraveled the last mystery of the Chinese FM radio kit. That button, oops, that button is just the right uh, size, the right height. That is the solution to uh, making the uh, the radio work properly. Uh, I'm going to put all this together and see if I can uh, make a video for you that. Uh, might help other buyers of this radio figure out how to uh, put it together.